tail of the tape, pretty close in age. And you see a slight height advantage for Manuel Medina. And you see a slight reach advantage for Medina as well. Take a look at the rules under which they will be competing tonight. They are unified. Gentlemen, I gave you instructions in the dressing room. The only thing I'm going to tell you now is when I tell you stop, that means stop whatever you're doing and give me a clean break. Protect yourselves at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Let's do it. Well, there you have it. We're ready to go. Paul, quit distracting. Uh, Paul Rodriguez over here har yeah. harassing the announcers. <laughs> but we love him. He's doing a great job for us tonight. He, he said he would have come for free, but let's get back to the business. <laughs> All right. Round one scheduled for 12 for the IBF Featherweight Championship of the World. Mentecas Medina in the white trunks. Marquez in the black trunks with the white stripe. Marquez going right to work. As you mentioned, uh, Mantecas Medina doesn't have a, a crowd pleasing style. Perhaps uh, one of the reasons why the referees didn't award him the fight against the Gianni Tapia that a lot of people saw uh, Medina win. And uh, Marcus has also been in some controversial fights. The one that he had against uh, Norwood. Many people thought that Marcus won that fight. Well, I think the crowd here, he brought a lot of friends from Tijuana, though. That's why they made the introductions. And there's always that rivalry between Tijuana and, and Mexico City, or any fighter from Mexico City right. and the rest of the country. And uh -huh. we have that right here. And I'm sure in Mexico City tonight, uh, they are watching intensely as Juan Manuel Marquez, who's won 10 fights in a row, is hoping, as he says, to get a piece of that featherweight pie that is now being hogged by Barrera and Morales. Nice combination downstairs by Marquez. And his only slip up was against a very awkward, tough style, a lefty in Freddie Norwood. And then he just couldn't, Mohamed wouldn't fight him. And uh, then they had one scheduled with uh, Derek Gaynor. That didn't come off. He withdrew from that. On the other hand, you got on the other side of the legend Medina, who's fought Frankie Toledo, Derek Gaynor, Hamed, Johnny Tapia. So he's been out there oh, yeah. with that awkward style. Mateka's uh, style has worked for him pretty well. Scheduled for 12 rounds. Yeah, Medina has got some uh, good skills, movement. Very tough, durable, that's for sure. Very tough. But just the, the one element, the, the punching power. Yeah. If, he, if he'd have had punching power, I believe he could have uh, taken care of Tappy and it uh, wouldn't have been any question about that fight. He'll throw a wild lunging right sometimes, and then he'll tap, 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 change energy, change directions, change energy. And you're going to get more of a straight in style for Marquez. A tough warrior, both of them are. And uh, just an interesting, intriguing matchup we've been waiting for ever since we heard about this. We're yeah. in round one. Going back to that power, Medina only winning about 35% of his fights by uh, by knockout. So that'll give you an idea. He's used to going the distance. Well, he expects it every time he goes out there. It's hard to believe Medina's had 72 professional fights. Of course, as people know, we've mentioned before, in Mexico, they start early. There's no real amateur career. They'll fight as early as 14, 15 years old because they want to make the money. This guy began at the age of 14. Right. Said he got tired of all those bullies uh, picking on him, so he went in right into the gym. You judge, uh, Marquez landed, landed more punches at 43%, 27 out of 63. Medina only 17 out of 53, 32% if you were going to give a slight edge, according to CompuBox. But we'll see if they pick it up a little bit. Long way to go. Schedule for 12. We should also point out that there is a, a chess match being played in the corners. Of course, uh, Juan Manuel Marquez has uh, Nacho de Sain. And. Um, oh, third combination, and down goes Medina. A one, two, three, right to the head. We'll see if he can get up. Powerful combination that landed clean. One, two, three. He's up. He's up, He's up on Robert Bird's count. Robert Bird is going to take a look. Oh, we'll see if Marquez can follow up. Got a full round to go, as Mario points out. Oh, he just jumped all over him with a combination, all three punches. We'll see if Marquez can finish up. 
uppercut that lands. I don't know if this is the right thing for Another him. uppercut Yo, that lands. A right hand. him. Marquez over the top. He can't be playing that game, Medina. He's got a hug. He's got a clinch. He's got to get his legs back. That's yes, exactly what he needs to do. An oh, early, yeah, early knockdown in round two. And he's taken three or four more uppercuts. There's a jab that's landing. We got a whole half a round to go here, Mario. Medina connecting a couple straight punches, but his eye's already swollen, his uh, white eye. But he's still there. Did not take time to try to hold and hug and clutch and grab. And there's the combinations and the speed for Marquez. Now we know why nobody wants to fight him, for sure. Been a top contender for the last five years. When he fought that eliminator against um, Robbie Peden, when Peden went to the corner in the 10th round, he vomited. That's how hard he was hitting him to the body. That's never good. Never a good no, sign good. <laughs> when you have to vomit in the corner. Medina trying to come back. And of course, there's always the danger that Marquez throws too many punches trying to finish the job and gets caught himself. But we shall see. What an exciting knockdown that was. And these two guys are giving. You know, we promised a night of fury, didn't we? Well, I think we've delivered. Absolutely. Salida was fantastic. Carlos Hernandez winning the title. And then we saw the truth. Miguel Cotto, 10 seconds, round one. Medina, will he survive? Round two, excuse me, will he survive it? Absolutely. Here he goes. He's Incredible. Still, what a warrior. And it's swinging at the end. A little punch at the end. What a second round that was. Yeah, let's see what the corners have to say. Romulo Quirarte in Manteca's corner. Nacho, but he's signed with Marquez. Why do you stop and let him hit you? See that punch one more time. Oh, beautiful combination. Combination. One, two, three. Straight up. One, two, three. See, I was just going to mention that lunging right. Remember I mentioned at the top when Medina throws that lunging right, he seems out of control, and that just left him wide open. Here we go. Here's that right. Uh-oh. <laughs> that's not good. And that's the way you Check block out, a punch, Mark too. Out, Mark Marcus blocks the punch, comes right back up. But you know what? What about the condition on, on uh, Medina? Matekas Medina. Oh, my God. Matekas is still with us. God, he had to fight two and a half to rounds. I mean, two and a half minutes after getting knocked down. Round three scheduled for 12. Matekas Medina is in the white trunks with the red stripe down the side. Marquez in the black trunks with the white trim. Now Medina seems to want to force the issue. But you did have the impression coming into this fight, and it's pretty well documented that Marquez has the power advantage. But it, I will be curious to see if Medina on, would on, dare on. throw that little awkward lunging right again and pay the price. There, he, he didn't quite commit to it there, but he often does commit to that right hand. I've seen it on tape numerous occasions. Oh! Marquez throwing punches along the ropes as he slips punches and steps back. Medina keeps pressing forward. Mark is a very patient individual, not only in every fight, he showed a lot of composure in that, that round where he uh, got the knockout, but also in waiting for the right fight. Waiting for the right showcase. He could be one of these great warriors will walk away tonight with the IBF belt, set the stage for good things down the road. You know, Derek Gaynor, who's the WBA uh, champion, avoided him. He skipped him, so to speak, so now he may not have uh, that choice if he wants to unify the featherweight title. And I think uh, Marquez would be highly motivated should he win here tonight to get that fight. And of course, there's two great names from Mexico that is the standard right now, Morales and Barrera.
Barrera not holding a title. He doesn't care about titles anymore. And I think it's such a wonderful thing that the fighters in this weight class are starting to get more recognition for the great shows they put on night in and night out. Medina's trying to press the issue. The Latin audience is growing huge. These are their champions, their heroes, and it's nice for them to make good paydays. Turning into one of the glamour divisions in boxing. Featherweight division, Barrera, Morales, and whoever wins this one. Nassim Hamed, of course. Trying to make a comeback, Derek Gaynor, Johnny Tapia, In Jin Chi. The right eye is swollen, and we're only in the third round of Mentecas Medina. I see a little bit of swelling on Marquez as well, but I see also a sense of calm in the face of Marquez. Execute the plan. And win I, rounds. I'll go along with that. <laughs> win rounds. I'll go along with, with my, all my expertise. <laughs> Round four scheduled for 12 from Mandalay Bay. Top rank has been thrilled to bring you this tremendous fight card tonight. And this one, I think, I predict this will get even better as it goes along. And we've got a long way to go. Medina has certainly recovered from that second round knockout. But he's in a little bit of urgency because he's taken some punishment on that right eye. I don't anticipate he would quit under any circumstances. Juan Manuel Marquez has, been, has thrown crisper, more effective punches. But you know what? Every time I see Medina fight, the other guy looks like he's throwing crisper, more effective punches. <laughs> and Medina showing initiative now. He's the uh, aggressor, making Marquez back up. Good footwork from Medina. Marquez has been, as Mario pointed out, going backwards to a degree. Nice oh, combination up top. Yes, to the chin of Marquez. Medina coming back, then over the top goes Marquez. So Medina following the instructions, trying to gain some confidence, regain that confidence you had coming into the fight. He's trying to do that. He's going more straight in with that right hand, and it's been effective. Nice jab. Nice Look jabbing. At Look at him. He's a fighter. At the right hand catches uh -oh. him. Another right hand uh -oh. catches Medina as Marquez says, enough of that with the jabbing. I'm coming right at you. Good uppercut for Marquez, but Medina keeps throwing. Good action in this fight. Tremendous action. Good hard body shot. And the corner screaming. Distance, Manuel. Of course, he's got more range, so it's to his benefit. Keep Marquez at bay. You've got to admire the way. Medina keeps coming and keeps coming, and he's getting hit, and he's got a right eye that's swelling, but that's him. That's a right hand once again snuck in there by Marquez. Left hand over the top. I think we're back in one of those situations, Mario, where you throw and you have to absorb because you throw. That's what Medina's in. He throws, and then he has to eat a combination. Oh, good right hand once again. Marquez trying to finish the job. Final seconds, another right hand and a combination to the head. Medina steps out of it. Blood streaming down the nose. That's the legendary trainer, Mr. Chiarte. And you know, Nacho Beristain's not too bad either in the other corner, so. Oh, no. <laughs> we got two, two great First trainers. First time they ever oh, right hand. in a title fight. Another right hand. That right hand is beginning to find the range. Marquez looks like he oh, wants oh, to finish. Oh, Good, oh, uh-oh. Warning up, from, from the referee, Robert Bird. That right eye is looking really bad for Medina. Marquez has been able to explode and get off more powerful punches at a faster rate. Body shot downstairs. But you know what? Here comes <laughs> here comes Medina again. Low blow. 
A left hand, a short hook to that swollen eye. Oh, left, right to the face of Medina. And then an uppercut as Medina's forced to retreat. Marquez really throwing now. Juan Manuel Marquez fighting like he doesn't really want to hang around for all 12 rounds. If it's all the same to you. I just don't get it every time Medina gets punched and clocked like that. Instead of compressing the distance, he stays in the same place and allowing Marquez to continue the punishment. Either move to the side, backwards, or hold. Simple physics, space and time. That's what it is. Another combination inside. Like I said, Juan Manuel Marquez thrilled crowds at the Great Western Forum in his early days. Was quite a popular fighter in Los Angeles. The headliner. Almost borderline low blow there. And he typically pleases the fans with his incredible durability and uh, his guts. Not sure what he's dying, called his style as ugly, but effective. Ugly, but effective. Any way to get it done, you know? Like that. Yeah, it doesn't matter how you get there. Side punch. Good right hand from Marquez. Medina's getting beat with quickness, but he's still throwing. Low blow almost there. You know what? The fans are getting the money's worth here. And Medina's getting a whipping. Yes, he is. Robert Byrd has uh, sent the message out that he doesn't see more from Medina. There's no reason to take this punishment. So Medina has been given his marching orders from the referee. Whether or not he can fulfill that request uh, remains to be seen because Mr. Marquez has other ideas. You know, legend has it that uh, Manuel Medina made $10 on his first fight, $20 for his second. Took him a dozen more to win 100. <laughs> now he's making 125,000. <clears throat> Took him 30 fights to make a grand. Sounds like my career. It's a tough living. Yeah. Well, Another combination up high. The right eye is just about gone. Medina's right eye. We've seen some great warriors absorb a lot of punishment tonight. And Mark is being true to his word and promise. He said the game plan is be aggressive. The key is pressure, pressure. He's done exactly that. Pressure, but yet, you know what? He hasn't, he hasn't been cautious. He's been uh, putting on a tremendous show. That's why people should want to see this guy fight and see him move on to the, at the next level if he can get there and put him in there against some of the other champions. And let's, uh, let's get it going. Let's quit walking away from Marquez. Also in the gym, Marquez using uh, bigger sparring partners, knowing that I don't know he's going to be a big, uh, bigger boxer. Being smart about that as well. Well, Medina's answered the call from the referee, but he's just not landing effective punches. But he is active. Of course, Marquez didn't hear that warning being given out. Uh oh. And I like the way Marquez describes himself. He says, I'm 70% boxer, 30% puncher. Well, he's certainly showing a lot of punching tonight as he stumbles a little bit over here on the ropes. Medina unable to connect. That's not probably where Marquez wants to be sitting on that rope. We're in round six, scheduled for 12. Been pretty much Juan Manuel Marquez. Good body punches. Marquez once again looking for a good, <laughs> movement. good movement. Pretty, wasn't it? <laughs> you 
have to wonder about Marquez throwing so many punches at this point. I mean, he might land power punches, but there's not much room behind him. And I know you'd agree, Mario. Absolutely. I also agree <laughs> with the fact that uh, you, you pointed out at the end of the sixth round that uh, Marquez may be getting tired. He's only halfway there if we go the distance. Exactly. Seventh round and a little bit of a turn in that sixth round because uh, the referee, Robert Byrd, one of the best in the business, is getting ready to punch out Medina. Grab a towel and throw it in. Look at Medina. Well, we've seen this, you know. Saw it from Cesar Pazan earlier tonight. Always coming at you. Right in your face. He also puts his head against your face. Many of his fights have ended due to headbutts. Yeah. Well, Mark has got to be careful about that. Mark has got to be careful not to cut like that. You don't want to. But I, I don't know how, you know, you got a one eyed fighter up there. I, mean, I would think that uh, one Manuel Marquez would start throwing a little bit of a jab over the tie. There he goes to the left hook. He's, oh, he, oh, that's a hard punch. Down goes Medina. A hard left, as I was saying, go to the right eye with the left hand. Seven. Eight, you okay? Robert Byrd's going to have the ring doctor look at Medina. That's it. That's it. That's a good decision. Juan Manuel Marquez has dominated Mantecas Medina tonight to win the IBF featherweight title. There will be no way now to avoid him. He has earned it the hard way with patience, durability, hard work, and I hope you were impressed, ladies and gentlemen, because he's earned it. I certainly was impressed by Juan Manuel Marquez. Demonstrating his incredible ability, accuracy, pressure, good defense. And if... Well, he's going to go check on Mentecas Medina. I mean... I, I've seen two fighters tonight lose, and I have so much respect for them. Here's Final the, moments of the fight, and you called it. I thought Alan, he, you called it. Yeah, well, he had couldn't see. If you can hit the roulette tonight, like you he anticipated this punch, <laughs> you said that the left hook went to the head, and that was it for Medina. Well, I've seen too many boxing matches over the 17 years I've been covering this sport, but I said he's got he's got to somehow take advantage. Whoops. <laughs> He needs to take advantage. And they weren't really solid. The first one kind of grazed him on the side. The other one slipped off the top of his head. Nevertheless. And I think that uh, Robert Byrd would have taken this fight on out at uh, at the if, if, if Marquez had shown anything at all in that sixth round. Look at that eye. All right, it's time now to set it up for the official announcement from Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen. Chief ringside physician Dr. Margaret Goodman advises referee Robert Byrd to call a halt to the bout. The official time, one minute, 18 seconds of round number seven. The winner, he is now the IBF featherweight champion of the world, Juan Manuel Marquez. Our heartfelt congratulations go to Juan Mel Manuel Marquez and also we also want to congratulate the other fighters who have put on a night of fury for you. Medina just didn't have the speed of it. You know what? Like I said, when you have somebody and you're facing somebody like a Miguel Cotto tonight or a Marquez tonight, you know, they can make you look like you don't have anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's go to our good friend Paul Rodriguez in the ring for the interview. Well, thanks a lot. You know, for many years, uh, Juan Manuel Marquez has been considered one of the best featherweights in the world. Hasn't really gotten a shot, but tonight it's his day. Por muchos años están considerado el mejor, si no uno de los mejores campeones de, del peso pluma. Y este es tu primer título. ¿Cómo te sientes, jefe? Bueno, después de esperar tres años, yo creo que me siento contento de que se haya este, con, este, adquirido este campeonato. Y yo creo que vamos por más, primero Dios. Oye, este, ¿qué, ¿qué tal sería un pleito entre tú y Morales? ¿Ese es tu, uh, tu gol? Sí, yo creo que vamos a pensar en, en un futuro, este, a seguir trabajando más fuerte como hicimos esta pelea y, este, y esperar cualquier oportunidad de Morales o Eric 
o Bones Adams o cualquier X de peso pluma. I asked him, uh, was his goal to, uh, to fight uh, uh, Eric Morales? And he said, absolutely, that was his goal. And uh, for a long time, he says uh, that uh, this, is a, this is a title well deserved. Mira, Juan, este, cuando, cuando estabas en el primer round, creíamos que esta, este pleito ya iba a terminar. Ya lo, ya lo tenías. Sí, yo creo que Manuel Medina es un gran campeón. No nada, veces, tres veces campeón del mundo y tiene su honor. Y yo pensaba que en el segundo o tercer round, en el tercer round se acababa la pelea, pero no. Es de muchos pantalones, como todos los mexicanos. Eso. You know, I asked him, I said, you know, we all thought this uh, fight was going to end in the first round. And he said uh, he's got to give a lot of credit to uh, Mantecas Medina. He's a tough opponent. He went in there and he uh, just uh, stood up there like all great Mexican champions. Bueno, te, te deseamos lo mejor, un gran campeonato. Y a tu entrenador, el, el elocuente, el famosísimo Nacho Berenstein. ¿Qué, qué pensó de su, de, de su boxeador aquí? Estoy feliz porque él debería haber sido campeón ya desde hace muchos años. Desgraciadamente le daban mucho la vuelta, pero le vimos la cara a Dios el día de hoy. You know, I asked him, uh, how does he feel about his fighter? He says, you know, he should have been a champion a long, long time ago, but finally these people had the courage to not skirt him, and they fought him, and, you know, next thing you know, he's a champion. De pura, de la Ciudad de México. Quiero este, mandar un saludo Mándale. a mi esposa, a mi hijo, a mi madre y a mi hermano Rafa, que le siga poniendo empeño porque vamos a venir a apoyarlo. El 15. He wants to send his, uh, his uh, hellos to his family back in Mexico, his wife and everybody over there, and I'm sure they're throwing a party in the Marquez home right now, ¿qué no? Okay, sí, este, <laughs> vamos a seguir trabajando y les mando un beso a toda la afición de Los Ángeles, de todo el mundo, que espero y me sigan apoyando, un beso. Well, we're with you, Marquez, you know, congratulations, champ, you know.